Hi, I'm Alex Benestelli, Music Director at St. James by the Sea Episcopal Church in La Jolla, where we're building a fantastic new pipe organ. Today I'm going to talk to Rick Parsons, President of the Parsons Pipe Organ Company in Canandaigua, New York. But before I do, I want to invite you to our website, www.stjamesorgan.com, to see all of the information and new updates about the new pipe organ. If you haven't already, you can make a pledge to the campaign or a donation to our organ project to help us succeed. Thank you. Hello and welcome. I want to introduce uh, Rick Parsons, president of the Parsons uh, Pipe Organ Builders, who joins me today. Uh, thank you, Rick, for taking the time to talk to me. Of course. I want to tell uh, folks that are watching uh, sort of how I came to know uh, your work and why I'm so excited about it. And that is, um, parishioners of St. James may know that before I came to La Jolla, I worked uh, in Buffalo, New York for five years. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. And while I was there, uh, Rick and his company rebuilt a uh, phenomenal instrument, a huge organ at Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Buffalo. Uh, and uh, just as that was being finished, uh, Rick's son, Matt Parsons, gave me a behind the scenes tour. I don't know if you know that, Rick, uh, but I, I got to go through the whole organ and I was just so impressed at how clean everything was and how put together it was. And it was just magnificent. And anyone who had seen the organ from decades before uh, knows what a m monumental feat that was. So to, to see how wonderful it, it, it was and then to go, go out and play the organ and hear it sounding better than it ever had uh, was just incredible. So uh, when we were talking to Manuel Rosales and, and talking about uh, the organ project, here at St. James and Manuel said he uh, would like to work with Rick Parsons at Par Parsons Organ Builders. I just was overjoyed. I thought it was the perfect combination. So uh, thank you, Rick, for uh, everything that you've done so far and for uh, you know this, all the wonderful work that precedes you. Very um, good, yes. Uh, I know that uh, Parsons Organ Builders is a family company and you're several generations uh, into it. Would you just tell us a little bit about the history of Parsons Organ Builders, how it came to be, and um, what it, what it's like. Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, my great grandfather worked for the J. W. Steer and Son in uh, <clears throat> Springfield, and and then in Westfield when the factory moved, and he married into that family which uh, I think uh, uh, JW's niece, and that's how he got into the company and became a voicer, a flu voicer there. And then Skinner bought that company. And in fact, my grandfather started at Steer and worked for Skinner uh, installing organs. And that's a whole nother interesting story about how you end up in different departments. But uh, so as a result of traveling around and, and seeing Rochester and installing organs here, the, the big organ at Kilburn Hall, um, he settled in Rochester. So that's where he started up the current company. But, and that was mostly a, a maintenance company and restorations of organs. And, and my dad did that uh, after he actually worked for Moeller for a brief time installing organs, a lot of work in New York City. And so we kind of have organs in our blood and, and uh, Cal and I <clears throat> stayed with the company and we decided to expand the company back in 19, 1983 <clears throat> and we built our first organ and our first four organs were mechanical action and then it's been a mix since then of different kinds of organs. Uh, so we do that, we have a, a, you know, we needed a much bigger facility than my dad and grandpa had. So then uh, I guess what's continuing on now is that it looks like uh, two of my three sons, uh, Matt and Tim, are going to continue in the business. So it'll continue to be a family business. That's great. And Cal, of course, is your brother, right? That's right. Cal's my brother. Yep. And, and your wife, Ellen, also works for the company. Is that right? She technically is our boss. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I, she's always the one I get the uh, the invoices from. It's yes. a very important role. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, she's the business manager. She does uh, many many things here. So yeah, she's an important part. That's fantastic. Uh, uh, Rick has been to La Jolla 
twice now. Uh, Rick and his colleague Peter came uh, in the design process, I suppose you'd call it, early on uh, right. to, to visit the church. And um, uh, I, I picked them up at the airport. And if you've ever seen uh, two people from up, upstate New York land in Southern California in the middle of winter, that's exactly what they looked like. Yeah. Um, and we had a wonderful time uh, talking about the new organ and and, and our uh, philosophies behind it. And then of course, uh, Rick came back with his whole team last year, uh, just over a year ago now to do the removal of our previous organ, the Austin organ. Uh, and mm -hmm. he brought the whole crew from, uh, from Canadegua, uh, New York. And it was wonderful to, to meet everyone and, um, and, and see the, the work that you guys do. And of course, we're looking forward to welcoming you back um, in just over a year from now when you'll be installing the new organ, and we can't wait uh, for that. But um, for those who aren't familiar with uh, New York, will you tell us where you're located and what are the Finger Lakes of New York? Sure. Uh, so I guess that they call it the Finger Lakes. There's, I think, nine altogether, but there's five large ones and uh, because of the way they formed. So if you look at it from a satellite view, that's it looks like a hand. and. Uh, so how all this was formed during the Ice Age, I think, and uh, so there's all these long, narrow lakes. So Canadegua is uh, sort of in the middle of there, and <clears throat> it's just one of the Finger Lakes. So that's, you know, it's a pretty well-known region. We are second uh, to Sonoma Valley for winemaking. I mean, the conditions of fresh water and uh, the, because we have so much fresh water, it's... Uh, uh, one of the one of the things everyone needs, and you can come to wineries now. This is not an advertisement, but there's, <laughs> there's probably 400 wineries on. Well, it's probably well over that now in in the three main lakes that are in the center of this that uh, that focus on that. So, um, so anyways, it's uh, yeah, it's a beautiful New York. Of course, is beautiful. Um, you have to tolerate a little snow. But uh, I was going to say, speaking of the Ice Age, uh, it's uh, <laughs> February now in, in upstate New York, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's it, uh, it's good because we can come and visit you in the summertime and, uh, you know, take a ride on the lake and drink wine is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> well, right. That's good. Yeah, well, yeah, it's beautiful here in the summer. Well, one of the one of the perks of the job. Um, we, we've been talking about this collaboration between uh, yourself and your company and Manuel Rosales and his company. And um, I think it's a little bit strange uh, for some people to think that there are actually two companies collaborating to build this organ. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit about why you might need more than one company on the job and what exactly is it that you do and what is it that Manuel uh, and his folks do? Yes, so of course a collaboration works well when there's two people bringing unique things to the project. It's not just a matter of division of responsibilities, um, which of course it is, but <clears throat> the, uh, the, the idea with this collaboration, which we've done with Manuel in the past, so he has experience with us and knows what to expect from us. Uh, so that, that's a help. And uh, Manuel brings his unique uh, vision to a project. So when you know exactly what you want and there are, you know, you, you, you define that at the onset. We, we, you know, we did all that with you and, and just determined what was gonna happen. And Manuel is responsible for the design details uh, in terms of the, especially in terms of the sound. Uh, he's he is responsible for even the, the mechanics. We, we design that, but we do it in, a, in collaboration with them and we review what's gonna happen and where things are gonna sit. And uh, I guess the, the most recent example of that is in determining pipe scales. You know, Manuel is ultimately responsible for that and to get a Rosales sounding organ. Uh, Parsons wants to achieve that, of course. But he also needed a lot of information from us to know how the organ is going to be laid out and just in terms of we call it planting the pipes so where they are in the chamber there's a lot of square footage there and a, and a pipe is going to sound differently if it's 15 feet in the chamber versus one foot deep in the chamber and so there's um, there's a lot to coordinate in this initial design phase which has required a lot of time 
Yeah. Uh, and, and so, Rick, what, once some of those decisions are made, then is it you, do I understand correctly, you are responsible for ordering parts and actually doing uh, construction assembly of the physical part. Is that right? Yes, yes. So we're, we make it happen. Uh, the, all the work is done here in Canandaigua. In fact, the organ is uh, assembled completely for testing uh, to make sure that when we get to La Jolla, that there's no uh, unforeseen problems. Uh, we, you know, get things uh, winded and electrically tested. And so it's all, it makes the installation very quick because the mechanical installation is, I'll just roughly say one quarter of the, of the task to install an organ, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's monumental. We come out with a crew of 10 or 12 people and spend three to four weeks probably. Um, and then the voicing, that's when, you know, someone takes what we did with preliminary estimates, I guess I'll say for setting the tone of the organ here to get pipes pre-voiced, but then the room, you know, your nave affects everything uh, in terms of how tone develops. And so each pipe, uh, gets individually voiced after we arrive. So we, we try to speed that up by preparing things here, but we always know that's the, that's yeah. the test of whether the organ's gonna be superior, <laughs> you know, when the, it's done. The, the two interesting points there, one is folks might not know that, that the organ, except for the reeds, as I understand, will actually be entirely set up and playable in your shop there in Canandaigua, New York. So if we were to right. fast forward uh, by some months here, uh, you know, our organ is actually going to be up and playing in Canandaigua. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> and then, yes. Uh, and then when you get here, and uh, there's the mechanical installation, and then as you said, the voicing is where each individual pipe gets its own uh, sort of personality and quality and character. And as you said, it takes each individual pipe is done by hand. Is that right? Yes. That's astonishing, I think, to me and to a lot of people because. I don't have the number in front of me, but I think there are north of 4,500 individual pipes in the organ. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Um, so, you, you know, when you say by hand, that's by hand with a voicer in the chamber and then by ear. So the person at the organ console, uh, or we also, because this is electric action, we can have a remote keyboard in the sanctuary. So we try to listen to the organ from different points in the room and to, to see how the different, how each pipe sounds and then how they sound in different combinations to make sure that the literature that's gonna be played is that the organ is balanced correctly. Yeah. So that just takes time yeah. uh, in the yeah. room. And uh, that's where, so Manuel is heavily involved in the design process. And then he's involved as we order parts and decide on techniques and things like that. But then he's very heavily involved <laughs> <laughs> in the total finishing process. Yeah, yeah, it's just incredible to me the amount of uh, care and craftsmanship and just artistry that you have to rely on your ears and your uh, your palette of, of tools to make this into the unique and special instrument that it is. Right. Uh, so I can't wait, I, and I can't wait to share that that whole process with the parish. And I know folks here are really looking forward to when those big trucks pull up and and we start to to bring things in. But just to back up to where we are now, um, another thing I think people would really like to know is you, you, we've seen, uh, you've shared, shared with us these pictures that are amazing of stuff happening in your shop. And I understand that you've been ordering uh, materials uh, from really all over the country and all over the world. Uh, could you tell us wh where, wh where have you ordered things from and, and wh what is that like? Well, <clears throat> we, you know, I'm, I'm always careful when I talk about buying things out of the country. <clears throat> we don't buy things. We don't buy things out of the country because they're better. We buy things uh, from vendors that specialize in the things we want. So we're buying uh, three of the reeds uh, for this organ are coming from Ohio. Uh, uh, then uh, the uh, voicer in Connecticut who specializes in this style voicing we want is voicing uh, nine of the reeds, I think. And part of those are built by the company in Ohio, <clears throat> the company in Ohio, um, AR, 
shops. Mm -hmm. And then Terry Shires is a pipe maker in England. And he specializes in a certain kind of reed uh, that we want. And so he's building the, for example, the, the great trauma chorus is being done. Um, and we've specified hooding for that and uh, all, all the pipe construction Manuel specifies. That's definitely one of Manuel's main responsibilities. And so the, the pipe order sheets are extremely detailed with pipe metal thicknesses, languid bevels, uh, uh, the, the reeds, whether they're the, the German or French shallots or uh, the thickness of tongues. Uh, yeah, there's just pages of, of details for, for pipe ordering. And that's what's been the biggest thing lately is to get all that finalized. The flue pipes are coming from um, J.F. Fitzau in Portugal. And they happen to build pipes in a way that voice the way we want them to voice. Uh, there's many pipe makers around the world and in the United States, but they, they don't make pipes in the same way. Um, I, I well, looked up the little town in Portugal where uh, Fitzau is located. And I have to say, it, it, I might get in trouble for this. It's even nicer than La Jolla. It's right <laughs> on the beach and they have a big <laughs> castle and it's, it's just gorgeous. So if we have a oh. vacation to go visit Fitzau, Let's yeah. <laughs> yes. Good idea. Good idea. Uh, so, and in fact, the person I talked to there is the son. So I know that's at least two generations working at that company. Um, and then we also buy that our facade pipes always, well, I shouldn't say always, but typically come from Laukhof in Germany. Um, they happen to make pipes in a particular way that we like with uh, the, the way that the pipes are constructed with raised mouths, for instance, it's, it's to be, when they're on facade, they're more decorative than uh, the internal pipes. Um, so, and they're polished in a very specific way to get, you know, this is one of the things we've been talking about is what, what we're gonna get in terms of the sheen of the pipes. Um, so let's see, where else? Oh, the keyboards are coming from PNS, organ supply in England. They've made, I think 90% of the keys we've used in organs and, and they're used by, I think pretty much everyone that's building high-end organs because they're just a premium keyboard. Um, Rick, what are so, the keyboards made made out of? We we know that uh, ivory is, is not allowed anymore. Do, do you know offhand what, what the, the keys are? Yes, we're using bone, it's cow bone. Uh, but it's it's very specific bone, um, and the that's for the naturals, and the and the sharps are ebony. Yep, that's great. I didn't know that. Yep. <laughs> so we have things coming from Germany, Portugal, the UK, Ohio. I know that the stop <laughs> uh, the draw knobs are coming from here in California. Is that right? That's right. Harris Precision Products makes uh, draw knobs, pedal toe pistons. Uh, the rocker tabs for the couplers, uh, all the the three of the winches in this organ are slider and tone channel, uh, and they're really the main chests. Uh, they Harris makes all the spring loaded seals for that, which is um, a very unique seal that they I think collaborated with Fisk to to do, and so we're we've been using those for many many years. Mm -hmm. um, so we depend on vendors for all these raw materials. Uh, and of to course, build they the make organ. their way to Canadagua and, uh, yeah. and you all build the organ using all these materials. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, and we've seen, of course, the wonderful 16-foot uh, uh, pedal uh, principle that you all are working on and, and building. And uh, it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, building the wood pipes takes a lot of space. Uh, <laughs> so we, we started with that to try to get um, while we're waiting for other aspects of the design to get done, uh, while the shop is available to use more than one person's workbench to get these done. So yeah, they're, they're coming along nicely. Well, that's fantastic. I, I can't uh, wait to share all this progress with uh, people on the, the stjamesorgan.com website and around the church. And I know it's something that uh, you know everyone here is gonna be so proud of and so excited. Uh, to share with the community when when uh, 
as it unvo as it evolves and and when it finally makes its way here it's just uh, mm. really really exciting so thank you thank you for the the quality the, the the tale all of the all of the craftsmanship and artistry you bring to this it, it's uh, really extraordinary well we appreciate of course the opportunity to work with you we 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 love working with clients who understand the difference between average and high quality uh it's and that's why we like working with Manuel. And it's, uh, you know, w one of our mantras around here is that everything about organ building is all about detail. And if you're willing to have that eye for detail and to, and to put that extra effort in, the, the organ goes from an appliance to being, you know, an artistic musical instrument. So, yeah. Um, and I think we you know, appreciate you, you, that. Yeah, well, we appreciate it too. And, uh, you know, I think that you've described uh, uh, things that you spend a great deal of time looking at and crafting and hearing with your ears. And I think the, that that last 5% of detail and, and dedication really is something that we all feel in our hearts when, when it's finished. All right. Uh, so Good. I'll draw this conversation to a close and thank Rick and everyone at Parsons or, uh, Pipe Organ Builders now and invite you back the next time uh, for another organ conversation. Great. Thanks, Alex.